This video is going to be demonstrating um, some things to look for when you're uh, purchasing a piano, say such as off of Craigslist or by some a piano by owner, somebody that's selling a used piano. Um, this piano is actually a piano that I purchased um, off of um, finding it off of a, a listing on Craigslist. Um, I paid $150 for this piano. It was a very good price for um, for the the size and quality and condition of the piano that it is and age. <clears throat> this one is actually a Whitaker, which was made by Jasper American Pianos, which was a brand that was um, made by the Kimball Piano Company. So most people have heard of the Kimball pianos. Um, this particular piano was made by a Kimball, and so I did a little research and found that out. Um, but I'm just going to show you a few things that you want to look for when you're um, when you're looking at a looking at a piano for for purchase. <clears throat> um, some of the things you want to look for are all the keys level, um, you know, because that's uh, one thing. Is if if the keys aren't all level, if you know some are a little bit lower than others, it could mean action problems. It could mean that uh, some of the balance rail felts have been chewed by mice. And I'll show you in a bit uh, some other signs you can look for um, when you're inspecting for mice damage. But uh, that's one of the things you want to look for. And then as you, um, as you try to evaluate uh, the condition of how it plays and sounds. Now, a lot of pianos uh, by owner or on Craigslist you'll come across and they maybe haven't been tuned for many years. Um, you know, so they, they will be out of tune as this one is. It, I'm not sure how long it's been since it was tuned, but you can always ask the, the seller um, how long it's been since it was tuned. And uh, sometimes they'll know, sometimes they won't, but uh, um, that's one thing you could ask. But uh, in general, even if it hasn't been tuned for many years, it should um, in, it, uh, rel be relatively in tune with itself. So, um, so maybe you can go through some of the keys. This piano is um, is out of tune, but it's relatively in tune with itself. So, as you're as you're going down, you may come come to a note that's uh, far off from where it should be compared to the others. That's that's one uh, pretty sure sign, or not always sure, but a pretty good sign that um, there may be tuning pins that are loops. Um, you know, which is a is a bad sign for a piano. Is uh, the piano's um, if the tuning pins are loose, there are some things you can do to alleviate that, but um, you know there's there's things involved in, in being able to do that. So that's that's one of the things you want to look for is is the tuning. And then as you play through the keys, um, and you might have noticed there are, are some sticky keys on this piano, and it doesn't necessarily mean that there's uh, major issues, but it is uh, something that may need repairs if they're sticking keys. So this one, as you can see, it, it goes down, but it doesn't come back up. Um, there's quite a long list of different things that can cause that type of a, a problem. And there's another one there. So, you know, if you've got a couple, it probably isn't too big of a deal in, in most cases. Um, action problems can be fixed um, you know, fairly easily by a, by a technician or even by a handy do-it-yourselfer, but um, uh, it is something to keep in mind when you're looking at a, at a piano. So, so if if there's a whole bunch of them sticking, you know, then you want to you know consider because then it's consider if it's um, a lot more work to 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 do it for you know what the piano what you're paying for the piano and. You want to take all that into consideration. So, so those are a couple things to, to watch for. Um, the the other thing is, you know, you can check the pedals. Um, if you take the front board off, and this is a good thing to do too, is to check inside the piano to make sure. You know, there's this is one of the places that you'd find signs of uh, uh, if there was mice had been mice in the piano. If there was mice in the piano, you'd see down inside, now there's a lot of cobwebs, which is not uncommon for a piano um, that hasn't been opened up for a while, but uh, you'd see uh, little black droppings. If you haven't seen mouse droppings, uh, you know, they're pretty evident <coughs> um, you know, where, where they've been. So you'd, you'd see them down inside the piano, and 
off, uh, off near the keys as we as you take it apart, you can see that there's if there's been mice dropped. Now this one doesn't have any in it, so it's a good sign. I mean, the cobwebs and the dust can be um, vacuumed out and cleaned out. <coughs> But um, if there was mice droppings, that could mean a sign that there has been um, possibly damage. Now as we look inside the piano, um, there's some things we can look for down here below the keyboard, <clears throat> down where the pedal mechanisms are. Um, one of the first things you want to check are the bridges, and that, those are these things uh, here that the, that the strings run over. There's some pins there that um, that uh, the, the strings run around. The bridges are, are the, the part of the piano that the, uh, that uh, transmits the, the vibrating sound from the strings to the soundboard. The soundboard is this whole wood area behind the strings, behind the plate, um, that um, is, the, is really the resonator of the, of the sound for the piano. So um, you want to check those bridges. Um, sometimes there's cracks in the bridges right where the pins are, or there might be a, a crack running across the, the bridge. But you want to check that just to make sure. Now these are in pretty good condition. You know, I inspected it before I picked it up and, and made sure that there weren't any, any of those issues. Again, there you can see some of the cobwebs, but uh, the bridges are in, in fairly good condition. Um, but you want to check the, that because that if, the, if there's cracks in the bridges, it, it could mean that the piano won't stay in tune very long. It could mean that there's going to be buzzes um, from, the, from, the, from that cracks. Um, so you want to check that. And again, down here is where you can see if there's any mouse droppings. Um, so, so that's kind of one of those structural things that are, are pretty crucial. If you've got structural problems, um, it's it's major repairs, which a lot of cases on a, on a cheaper instrument aren't worth it. So um, now the next thing you want to check is the back of the piano, if you can get to it. If it's up against a wall, it may be a little difficult. But here, um, and you can check inside the piano too for cracks in the soundboard. But uh, this uh, the back of the piano is really where you can see if there's if there's a lot of cracks or or wide cracks. Um, you know you're a lot of times it's going to get buzzing in the piano, uh, buzzing noises, which isn't good. Um, and again, it can have stu tuning stability problems because of it. Uh, the other thing is um, the piano has um, ribs, okay, and that's those are these these bars that run across, and that, what those are, those uh, hold the shape or the crown of the soundboard. Um, you generally, a, a soundboards aren't supposed to be flat. Um, you know, they they appear to be mostly flat but there is a little bit of a curvature as it goes across the soundboard and that's just to provide uh, better tone. So you want to check those things uh, for stability and um, uh, make sure that uh, you don't have separation. You know these ribs are, are glued to the soundboard okay but if that glue joint uh, separates um, you can have cracks and that can definitely cause buzzing uh, as the soundboard vibrates and you've got a space there, the soundboard, the vibration of the soundboard uh, can cause a buzzing um, or a rattling noise up against the, the loose space in the, in the ribs. So you want to check and make sure all your, all your back posts are in good condition, they're not separating from the frame, um, uh, and just make sure everything looks good. This piano isn't that old, so it's, uh, it's in relatively good condition. So. We check there's check for the cracks in the soundboard, separation in the bridges, uh, or separation in the ribs. Uh, make sure there's no cracks in the bridges. Uh, those are those are pr pretty crucial things that you commonly find in older pianos. The next thing you'll probably want to do is, um, you know, once you've once you've played the keys, um, you want to check for tone too. Besides our sticking note there. Okay. If you got somebody, if you don't play yourself, you can uh, bring somebody along with you, maybe to play, play some notes, play a song, um, just get a general idea of the tone. A lot of times, it's really difficult to tell if the piano is quite a bit out of tune because um, it's hard to hear past the out of tuneness. But um, but uh, the, you know that's a that's a good thing to do. Sometimes you can tell the the tone of the 
of the piano. Um, and then also, you know, a person that plays can uh, can get a general feel for the touch of the piano. Is it is it a real heavy touch? Is there are the keys real real sloppy? As you look at them, do they wobble back and forth? Okay, this one's uh, not too bad. They're pretty tight. Um, you know, so if, if that is, you know, that might mean that uh, the key bushings are loose and they need to be replaced, which not a huge deal, but it, it is another maintenance issue. If you're not going to do it yourself, you're going to have to pay somebody, pay somebody to do that. Um, now, this, this piano here is a console size piano. Um, there are also spinet pianos, which are the shortest of pianos. Generally, if the, if the top of the piano comes only to, you know, to about here on the music desk, Generally, that's that's a sign, or if it's uh, you know a couple inches below the the top of the music desk, it's a good sign that it's a spinet piano. Uh, which spinet pianos aren't uh, bad pianos in themselves, but uh, their actions aren't designed as well as a direct blow action, where the action sits right on top of the back of the keys. So the next thing um, we're going to check is we're going to open up the top of the piano. Okay, and now this one, we're going to take the music desk off too. Sometimes there's uh, little latches on, you know, right, uh, right on the sides here. This one has it so uh, it's, ju it's just got some brackets that sit on top of screws. And from there we can see the, the action and the insides of the piano. Okay, now here we've got uh, the tuning pins. And then, of course, these are the strings. Okay, now some things you want to check for is you check around the tuning pins. You want to check to see if there's any rust uh, or uh, you know a lot of rust. If it's just a slight amount, it, it shouldn't really be too much of an issue. But if there's excessive rust around the tuning pins and the strings, you know you could have an issue. Um, down the road with strings breaking. Um, if you, you might, might you might see um, some strings that are most of them are a little bit dull, but maybe you've got one shiny string. Just means that that one's been replaced, and there's a possibility that um, you know others may may uh, break in the near future. Not not necessarily an automatic because sometimes strings will break even on a new piano, but uh, it's a possibility. Uh, you want to check the condition of the hammers. Now these, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's there's some string marks you can see at the um, at the at the very t tip of the hammer where it strikes the string. You can see each one has some grooves. Uh, those grooves just show somewhere. Okay, these aren't too bad, but if you've got you know if you've got string grooves that are you know, a quarter inch, uh, eighth inch deep. You know, then you can see that there. You know that that means there's a lot of wear and there's not a lot of life left in those hammers. So that's the one thing you want to check. The other thing is you want to check to see that all the hammers are fairly in line. Here's there's a couple that uh, aren't quite as well in line with the others as c compared to the rest. But you know, there's some minor adjustments that can be done to to alleviate that. Um, but for the most part, and you can see that there's some inconsistencies, but for the most part, this one has hammers that are fairly well spaced spaced apart. So <clears throat> you can check that. Um, check the, and these, and this piano, the dampers are, are in fairly good condition. If you, uh, one thing you can check is if you play some notes, And when you let go of the note, you hear a little buzz sound. That would mean that the dampers um, have some hard spots on them and, and uh, it might need a little bit of maintenance. So those are just uh, a few things to check. Um, you can check down in here between the keys. It's dark in here, so you can't see really well. But uh, there again, that's another spot that you'd see some uh, signs of rodent or mouse uh, dropping. So, okay, so you can see that without taking too much apart. We left a, left a guitar pick in there. It looks like. Um, so this piano is in, in is in fairly good condition. You know, be, being a Kimball make, it's uh, it's an average, uh, maybe slightly below average quality. 
uh, for its age. This piano is from 1994, so again, it's not that terribly old. And we can see up here, this right here is the serial number. Uh, it shows you, um, there's books or resources that you can look up a serial number to see how old a piano is. A lot of times the serial number is, is right here on the plate. Sometimes it's over here. Um, by you know, this, a lot of times they'll have a model number and a serial number over here. But those are some of the places to look. Another place to look is on the back of the piano, and this one actually has the serial number um, right here on the back of the piano also. So um, sometimes it'll be on the corner here, or it might be on the the corner over here. But those are um, those those are places you'll find the serial number. Um, so, uh, so as your as your those are some, in general some things you can look for when you're going to look at a used piano because a lot of times the seller doesn't know you know what kind of condition or what issues there may be and uh, buyers as well may not know what to look for but uh, those are some things um, and it won't necessarily guarantee that you're going to get a great piano but uh, at least narrows down the possibility of some of the more uh, common issues. Okay, and if, of course, if you're ever in question, um, you know, feel free to contact a local piano technician, and they can certainly look for, look at it for you. But see, these are some things you can look at, um, uh, you know, yourself um, without having to hire a technician to look at it. So.